Welcome everyone, I'm Bob Kendall with the Kendall Report. I'm going to be going through the market grid indicator today. I'm going to give you some background on it just like I did on the PPMs in the previous session. And I'm going to walk you through how to use them, how to interpret them. And I think you'll find this very useful and I'll combine them with use of some of our other tools that we have in the toolbox in the indicators. If you haven't signed up, you want to find out more, go to the link that's on the page here. It's kendallreport.com slash indicators. You can find out how to get signed up and get going. You also get a free month to my live trading room. So I hope to see you in there. Wonderful to see the community share their ideas and how they're using the indicator. So make sure you join us. Uh, that's what this whole series is about, is trying to bring in an entire new thought process and how to approach the markets. What I do is very different. Most of you already know that, that watch my channel. Let's take a look at a couple things here that I want to focus on. This is going to be just on understanding the market grid. Quickly, who, who this is for is for virtually everyone, even if you're a novice or an advanced trader. I have been using these indicators and the suite for a very long time. Now the market grid, which we're talking about today was developed back in the mid to late 90s. And I'll explain to you what the purpose was and then how they evolved in my day-to-day -day operations and why it's called the market grid. Let's start talking about the market grid and what it was all about and why they were developed. Back in the 1990s, I had a service that was for traders in large institutional rooms, primarily hedging risk in their portfolios, whether it was bonds or mortgages. One of the key elements to have, whether you were a sell size hedge or a buy side hedge, you had to have a location to do trades on any given day. So a lot of my clients were asking me, hey, Bob, where's the best place to put these hedges on? And there was no way for me to communicate to them real time. This was early 1990s. In fact, the information that I put out every day was on a fax machine. That's how long ago it was. The internet finally started getting going later in the development of this service and I was able to deliver things a little more timely but even then in the early days it was somewhat difficult but let me explain I had to communicate to you as a trader if you were a sell side where was the best place to sell where was the best place to buy so I started to develop this market grid theory was that every bar for the most part overlaps sometimes you'll get a gap up or down but for the most part Every session, whether it's a five minute session, one minute, daily, weekly, monthly, whatever increment of time that you were looking at, the bar would overlap even. There would be some overlap, whether it was moving higher or lower. And I would use the PPMs to help to define where the likely high and low is of the session every day. As you know, watching the YouTube channel, that's what I do. I tell you, I'm looking for an S1, R2, R1, S3, whatever it is. And that's based on the direction and the potential overlap of the bars. Now this becomes incredibly important when you're starting to trade because you need to have, especially in day trading, but even if you're just trying to enter a trade on a stock or whatever, and you're trying to get the best possible position. So if today is the day that you've decided to buy or sell, where's the best place to do that? And that's what these indicators are going to help you to do. And especially on day traders, I'll show you a couple of techniques that are going to be really powerful. And when I do the video with the webs, the WaveTech webs, that will also give you some more insight and using the webs in conjunction with the market grid and then ultimately adding in the indicators of the PPMs and some other tools that we're going to be able to put together in the entire suite and make you an unbelievably accurate trader and knowing exactly where to place your stops and where your pivots are and all of those type of things. And you don't have to figure them out. The indicators are going to put them on the screen in real time for you. You're ultimately going to need to have the PPMs to determine that directional overlap. So. A lot of times, if the market's trending up, 
you should have positive PPMs, and therefore the overlap is going to be, will make a new high. And you'll be able to see all of these things, and I'll show you these techniques as we go through the charts. What I'm going to do to start with, we're going to watch the grid unfold. I'm going to use Microsoft as an example, and we'll watch it unfold on a weekly chart, and I'll discuss that as it goes through it. It'll probably be a one to three minute type increment that I'm going to talk about. Then I'm going to add in the PPMs and we'll stop and start and show you exactly what the expectations are for the bars. So you'll have a little more understanding of how to use that. Then I'll summarize at the end some of the other elements that you could bring into your analysis. All right, in this section, we're going to be watching the market grid unfold. You'll see it updating bar by bar, and you'll see it fluctuating within the grid. And you'll see about 12% of the time it will actually go outside of it. I'll talk about a couple events that happen there and what they mean from the standpoint of the trend changes and things of that sort. Now you see volatility is increasing here. And as volatility increases, this indicator adapts to volatility. It's similar but different than like a Bollinger Band. Bollinger Bands are based on standard deviations. This is actually based on a look back period looking at the average range for a period. Now you can go in and change these settings, I think as far as 300 days so or 300 bars. So you can really normalize the volatility and play with this indicator a little bit. Now the defaults are where I use it, which is set to three. So it's looking back on three bars determining this volatility. But you can see that about 90% of the time, roughly, you're going to stay within the indicators themselves. They're gonna give you a good idea. Typically on an entry or exit, I like to use an S2 on the entry or R2 on an exit. If I can get there, I'll show you a little more detail on what to expect on those when we go through with the PPMs on screen in just a minute. Well, we'll go ahead and continue to watch this play out just for a little bit longer to get a feel for how the grid is actually expanding and adjusting to market conditions. Now, this is a weekly chart, so I wanted to make it more dramatic from the standpoint of the price movements, but you'll see that very seldom even does it go above there. But when it does, it actually typically will suggest a sideways movement or possibility of a top or a bottom when it exceeds. It almost always is a sell or a buy on an intraday basis when that happens, and especially for the next session. But there'll be more discussion on that as we go through this video. Just a couple quick comments before we start this part of the video. I've got just PPM1 up here. That's going to be enough to tell us what the directional movement is from bar to bar. That'll give us some pretty good feel for what's going on on a very short-term basis or a bar to bar basis. Now this would be the same whether it was an intraday bar or a weekly or daily. This happens to be weekly. So it's still on Microsoft. We'll go ahead and I'm gonna pause the video from time to time as we go through this. Now the, the video is, is starting here as a replay and I wanna show you something here very quickly. You'll see where my cursor is and what's happening is that the PPM is accelerating. You'll notice that the bars are for the most part overlapping to the upside. So this is giving you directional movement. We can see in this session right over here now where my cursor is, you'll see there were four or five, this is weekly, four or five weeks of downside, but you see the PPM was negative during that time. So you can, when you start to see this turn up and down, you start to get a feel for what levels are going to play out. For instance, for the most part, if you notice, we did trade R2 on this particular bar. I know this is very small, but this area here, these were all, for the most part, printing R1, S3, and then also, even if it did print up to R2, S3 was typical, or even 
an STX, which is the extreme. We saw this go into a sideways pattern. We're still drifting here. And so there was really directionless movement here. And we're trading the typical S2, R2 in those ranges and volatility. Now this is weekly, so it has more of an opportunity to develop that volatility. But the second the we start to turn up here, I'll just bring us over here to this level here, you'll start to see that the PPM is turning up and the overlap is now to the upside. And by overlap, I mean that the bar is making new highs from the previous session and the overlap comes down typically not to lower than the previous session. So you'll see these overlaps start to happen. Every once in a while you get a, a spike in volatility, you might see that, but the STX level for the most part will contain that, especially as we're in this upper trend. So let me start the video again, and we can watch this unfold some more. Notice the PPMs are starting to turn down. We got a spike up here in volatility, if we turn back up, and now we're seeing some stability start to come in and now we're trading within the range volatility is kicked up substantially this happens to be march of 2020 so this is why we're seeing this extreme volatility but i want you to see how it is adapting to the ranges we're still staying for the most part within these ranges as they are being projected out in the future so there's a series of Fibonacci numbers that are in this calculation, but it's very stable and predicting how the market's likely to unfold here. You can see once again, as PPM start to increase, overlaps tend to be more positive. So what that means, you would slant your thoughts as far as an up day goes. This could be on a daily chart any length actually and what you're going to do is start to see that when the ppm one is positive it's going to give you a little bias to the direction especially if it's in trend mode above 0.25 that's something that you're going to be watching for and this technique in itself is going to be very useful especially if you were looking to trade this maybe put some option trades on whatever type of trading you're doing it's going to give you the ability which to position yourself and i would suggest actually especially for option traders that if you're trying to put in straddles and things of that sort you want to use a weekly chart and whether you're doing weekly options or monthly or whatever you're trading this is going to give you a really good idea of what's likely to happen you can switch this over to a monthly graph and use these same bounds trying to find that range to put your straddles on so there's a lot of things you can do you can use this for an entry price if you were looking to buy or sell a stock these are really great techniques to use and it's going to make your entry points much more accurate and give you a little bit of an edge and when you're trading for the most part all you need is just that little bit of an edge it's matter of fact i'll relate this to going to a casino all the casinos do on all the games that you play there is they have a commission and that commission just slants the odds toward the house so they're going to have a higher probability of winning. And by getting better positions when your locations of your trades is going to do just the same. It's going to give you that little extra edge. I can tell you just a very quick story to end this video is that in 1994, 95, I was on the Chicago Board of Trade with some buddies of mine and I was running the models from the floor flashing orders into the pit so we were live trading pit in the treasury bonds and we did that for about five months off of one and five minute chart which is a technique i've used for a very long time and i can tell you the only reason why all this trading that we did we made a profit was because we had great trade location we had what's called in the pit the edge we could buy the bid, sell the ask. That little bit of edge made the difference between profitability and, and losing money. So think about this. If you can position yourself on every trade, uh, the best value on that day that you're looking to trade, you're going to end up giving yourself that little bit of edge, 
even if you're wrong on the trade, you're going to have a smaller loss because at least you got the best possible execution that day. And that's what this indicator was built for. And along with some of the other tools, I'm going to have more advanced series as we go through this series on the indicators is to show you how to stack more of these tools in your favor. So now you're actually getting trade signals, trade location, everything gets higher and higher accuracy and ultimately it gets you to be what i've always tried to teach people to do is become a high percentage trader and become very profitable i hope you enjoyed this video i'm looking forward to the rest of this series as i go forward thanks for watching once again folks thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to sign up for these indicators you're not going to be able to take advantage of this series unless you have the indicators Go to the link here, kendallreport.com slash indicators. Find out more, how to get started, get access to our live trading room and become part of our community. I really appreciate you watching these videos. Make sure you subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell so you know when I post the next part of this series. Have a great day, everyone.